I'm here at the campground. I got a steak. I got some good vegetables. I got some other stuff, mushrooms, onions, all that kind of stuff. First, I want to set my awning up just so I can be a little bit more comfortable. It's hot now. It should rain a little bit tonight. And so I want to have that protection. I always shut this door when I set up the awning just so it's not in the way so I can work over here on the side. Over the last few years, I've gotten pretty good at setting this thing up. <clears throat> it's not that complicated. And the biggest tip I have is these two sidebars, put those out before you unroll the awning. That way you're not messing around with the awning and trying to pull these out at the same time. They're already out and sitting there ready for you to use them. There are supposed to be some thunderstorms tonight. So I'm putting these on the side just to make sure this thing doesn't become a sail and blow away. The ground here is a little too hard to poke these stakes in, so I'm just gonna leave them off. I'm gonna use my mirror in the front to secure the front side, and I may end up going with the picnic table for this other side. I might be able to reach this side out off of the platform, so I'll see if that works for me. So I'm out camping in the minivan tonight. I wanted to get set up so that I could dust off the cobwebs and get the van ready for some trips that I have coming up this summer. It's been a long winter. I haven't been out camping. I've been busy with work and that's starting to dial down a little bit and I'm getting ready to do some camping trips and probably one long minivan camping trip that will last up to three months or at least a mix of camping and hotel staying over a three month period. So I brought out a nice skillet so I could cook myself a steak and I left my flat stove back at home. So what I have here is this fire maple stove that works pretty good. And the only problem is with this pan, it's gonna be a little bit of a balancing act to make sure I don't spill whatever I'm cooking. So the stove is inside of here and I also have a small gas canister which is about half full and then I have a big canister in the van. So I do use these to cook enough and this one's probably about one third full 
and this one's about half full so hopefully between the two of them I have enough gas to get a steak cooked Unless I bump it, it feels like it'll be stable enough. Steak. Ah, we'll pass on the Brussels sprouts for tonight, but let's do some onions. What do we got here? Brussels sprouts. Do a little bit of spinach. Ah, some mushroom sounds good. And why not with the zucchini? The best part about having the fridge in my van is I can have access to frozen veggies at all times. So I'm not limited to like a day or two of fruit or vegetables that'll spoil. I can always have something frozen in there and I'm always ready to cook something. I've got to watch it because I always want to put the whole bag in and then before you know it, I'm eating like three pounds of vegetables at the end of the day. I'll get the veggies started. I'll throw these back in the freezer so they don't absorb a bunch of moisture. Lit right up. It's just a little windy here and I feel like one big gust of wind and I'm gonna lose everything. So let me get this steak opened up. I'll put my trash here right now and when I'm done eating, I'll actually walk over to the dumpster and drop this in the dumpster so it's not hanging out at my side all night.
looking about as done as I want that. All right, before you start beating me up in the comments, I have another stove that I didn't bring that has a bigger eyelet that I can cook stuff on. I left that one at home. And then I also thought that this campsite had electricity. So I thought this had a 50 amp outlet. And I'm trying to get set up to do shore power on my trips. So I brought a hot plate that I was gonna use to cook the steaks separately from the veggies. So this, uh, you know, vegetable soup with a steak in it was not my goal for today but i'm out here and this is what i have so this is what i used and then i picked up this shake tasty all-purpose blend and i assume it's made in america it says america seasoning on it and it's red white and blue so it obviously caught my eye manufactured oh it says made in the usa right there on the back okay manufactured exclusively for fire and smoke society in little rock arkansas this stuff tastes pretty good and it pretty much goes on anything i put some on my steak i rubbed it in i flipped it around a little bit i put some on the veggies flip the steak over and then put some on the other side i'm pretty sure that's not the right way to season a steak but i have what i have and i did what i did so <laughs> we'll see how it tastes in a second if you have any better ideas for how I could have cooked this steak today, maybe I could have used something different or cooked the veggies separately and then cooked the steak, let me know in the comments. I always love to get tips from you guys. Got some fresh ice out of the ice maker, so these are some massive cubes. So in another video I recently made here, I talked about why I wish there was a better way to store these ice cubes and what I can do now is once I get these ice cubes that I want just enough for my water here then <clears throat> I can just put this tray in my freezer as is so this will keep those ice cubes frozen in my freezer and then when I need to make more I'll just put it back in the water and then make another batch of ice cubes. All right, moment of truth. Big steak. So another thing I did, because I don't have any butter or oil or anything, is I used these veggies as a lubricant to keep the pan from getting burnt inside. So the steak's done, the veggies are cooked. I don't have to scrub this pan later to get it clean. And then of course, before I go to bed tonight, I'm gonna clean up my mess. It's cooked all the way through, but I'm absolutely sure this is not how you're supposed to eat a steak like this. Mmm. And that tasty shaker seasoning tastes tasty. <laughs>
So I feel like this was just the right amount of vegetables. But even that steak was probably perfect for two. It was like way too big of a serving for me. I don't know exactly what size it was, but but it was just a single steak. And I figured since I'm out here camping again, might as well get a good steak and cook it on my little stove. almost ready for another cook i just gotta dry it off and make sure there's no food particles left over inside of there that'll be good enough until i can get to some running water and clean that out good warm enough tonight that I'm going to put these uh, quality motors covers on my windows so I can roll down my windows my only worry is it is supposed to thunderstorm tonight so we'll see hopefully I don't get wet inside or hopefully it doesn't rain and get wet inside of the van with these things on I'm hoping that if they do get saturated the water will just kind of drip down the edges of them everybody's always asking me where i got these i got them off amazon if they're still for sale out there i'll put the link in the video description if you want to check them out they're really easy to put on i usually just look for this green corner and then i open the door and sometimes i put them over the the mirrors there but i might fold those mirrors and i got a couple of recommendations to fold them in the other day Got my corner lined up right there. That's basically a perfect fit that way. And then just uh, roll it down like a stocking or something. So if I don't do anything about this gap right here, bugs will be able to get in that way. And so what I normally do is just pull this around. I don't know if this stuff's gonna block it. And I pull some slack on it and that slack helps me close the gap ah my fancy rope here is holding this thing up so i'll go with that for now let's see i'll try to get it from the inside because i need that rope to keep my awning from flapping around if the wind gets out of control tonight mm, not gonna work huh so these are like no seam quality i could pretty much breathe with these on my face no problem obviously i wouldn't want to sleep like that but they work pretty good. Hello, how you doing? Good. And that's pretty much a seal. There's a little bit of a gap there, but I'm not too worried about it. And I found that if I give it more slack, on this side, the gap goes away a little. And there it is, fresh air in the van and, and I'm relatively protected from the bugs. Well, that solved my problem. That gap is closed. And I think this picnic table is probably heavy enough to keep my awning from blowing around in the middle of the night. One of my favorite parts about camping in my minivan is putting up my shades and making this my own like personal little space that I can hang out in. So I'm gonna take the next few minutes, get my curtains up. First, I absolutely hate wearing my shoes in the minivan. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those off. I meant to bring my Crocs, but it's like amateur hour tonight and I forgot my good stove, I forgot my Crocs. I've got these old window curtains for the side windows and they still work great. I've had these for pretty much four years now. 
but my one thing that I don't like about them is whenever I stop somewhere and use them, I, ha I struggle to get this corner in. It's like I'm always doing this with it. I recently bought these from the heat shield store and they're like custom made to fit in there. And I also bought some felt. So I'm gonna sew that felt on them. But for now, I'm just gonna try them like this and see what I think about them. That was so much easier. And when I get the felt on them, it will close any of the little gaps that I have right now. That went in there so much easier. So these ones are probably gonna leave the van pretty soon. For now, I'll tuck them under the bed out of the way. I'll open this door back up in a second. I just wanted to get these curtains in. That really is a perfect fit. And I almost wish Heat Shield Store would just make these with the black felt or the blackout non-reflective material on the one side. I'm happy that they're already black and I've went around at night and looked at them. I can see these ridges in the windows at night. So I don't really like that because I like the windows to just be blacked out and nothing reflecting from the inside. And these are some old Heat Shield Store ones I have from years ago and they're still working fine. And I have this excess felt on the edges that I put on there and really all that does is it helps to keep the curtain in place and it also closes any gaps that I have in the corners of the curtains. This rear window is also from Heat Shield Store. It fits perfectly as well and these came with some plungers that you can stick to your windows but I don't like those plungers for the same reason that I don't like the reflective material because at night I can see those plungers in the windows and so i keep a little stack of gift cards and just plug those into the the corners of the window to cover any gaps all right so i'm pretty much set up i'm gonna open the door and hang outside a little bit more before i go to bed and let it cool off a little more in here so the worst part about sleeping in the van when it's hot out is it's currently 79 degrees in the van. So it's like just below the threshold of what I consider to be uncomfortable. So I'm just slightly uncomfortable right now. And it's only 76 degrees outside. I do have like a little one person tent in the back of the van here. And I am a little tempted to set that thing up and go sleep in there tonight. But in the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna try this uh, new air conditioner. I tried an air conditioner last year that sat in the middle of the van. And that thing was, <laughs> it struggled to keep me cold. So I built a little sheet bubble with it. And in the sheet bubble, it did succeed in keeping me cool. But I had to stay in that bubble. And as soon as I left it, I would get hot pretty quickly. So the new air conditioner theoretically is over two times as powerful as the as the one I had previously. I'll try that out over the next couple weeks and I'll make a video sharing my experience with it. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get in my bed. And for those of you that wonder, I'm not gonna sleep with all my clothes on, but I'm obviously not gonna take them off on a YouTube video. So I'll see you guys in the morning. And this bed still is really comfortable after four years. I just added a bar last week. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. That bar really helps me keep the bed from falling off of the back seat when I move around. It didn't really fall a lot because I had some other contraptions back there, but what I have now is much more useful and there's no chance that this bed is gonna slide off in the middle of the night. Well, it's gonna be a windy day today. I don't think it rained much last night either. Some deer right outside of my van here. doesn't really matter what day it is. The first thing I like to do every morning when I wake up is make some coffee. The coffee maker that I have is from Ikea and it's really awesome, but there's actually a recall on it. And I'll tell you about that in a second. I like the fact that this coffee came in a tin and it wasn't very big, but 
now that I'm reading it, I just found one keyword that <laughs> I wish I would have paid attention when I bought this. This is instant coffee. And so I want hot coffee. I have my little mocha here with, with instant coffee. So I'm not gonna put it in there. I'll actually use the water. I'll actually just boil the water using the fire maple because this instant coffee isn't gonna do any good inside of this mocha. But here's the problem with the mocha. The mocha has, has a steel valve. And if that valve gets plugged, it'll cause this uh, Ikea metal disc, I think it was the original name, to blow up. These are supposed to be like a, a brass material, like a brass fitting, so that they can be a little bit pliable. And this one doesn't have it. But I keep it clean and I don't want to get rid of it because it's so wide it fits perfectly on my stove. So I've never actually really used instant coffee before. And this thing says two teaspoons per eight fluid ounces. So I pulled out my teaspoon. And of course this is in liters. So a half liter is like 16 ounces more or less. So. I'm sure this is going to taste horrendous when I make it. The good thing about this little stove is it only takes two or three minutes to boil water because of the way that it's designed. So by the time I get this done, I'll be pretty much ready to hit the road. I guess you put the coffee grains in while the water's boiling. I don't know, I never really made instant coffee before, so we'll see what happens. I honestly don't even think that was like three minutes. I think it was more like a minute and a half. So this thing boils water really fast. I'm not gonna lie, it smells disgusting. So this is pretty much how I start my day every day. Coffee, I don't really eat anything. I don't put any fancy creamers or sugars in it. I just drink my coffee black. And there's a little piece of leaf in there from the trees, but that's okay. My campsite is right next to this outhouse, but unfortunately the outhouse has a fan on top and I, I can hear that fan almost in everything that I've done today. So I'm gonna start packing up. This spot is a state park in Missouri. The site costs $15, so I'm actually pretty satisfied with that price, 15 bucks. And I had access to a bathroom and a decent place to sleep. Although around 10 o'clock last night, the, uh, the camp host pulled up to my site. I reserved the site online and when I came here, it said my site was vacant and I confirmed my reservation online. So I guess around 10 o'clock last night, the camp host came and gave and put a placard on my site saying that it's occupied. Glad he did that. But I was wondering at 10 o'clock at night if he was gonna get me out of bed and ask me you know, what I was doing here. I do have the digital receipt, but I was already like in my underwear in my sleeping bag, so. You know. And I would say the lowest it got last night was 65, which which is not bad at all. It's not a bad temperature to sleep in. But you can see that in the van, the temperature is always a little warmer than it is outside. And of course, there's uh, folks going to this uh, outhouse all morning and they're looking at me talking into my camera, like who's this nut talking into his camera? I actually thought that this would be more common now because so many people are on YouTube, but there's still so many folks that are like, what is going on? And if I'm really honest with myself, I would say 99% of the people at these campgrounds are just here to camp and enjoy themselves. Not to make these goofy YouTube videos. You know, the, the view isn't as, as uh, panoramic and as beautiful as you might expect, but still couldn't have asked to wake up in a better place. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on this camping trip. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. 
or just give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe and I'll see you on my next adventure.